Bueno, damas y caballos, eh, la gente del de programa que vale, que necesita urgente hablar en inglés, se nota, no hablan un pelo de inglés, me dijeron, gringo, ¿puedes entrevistar a Senshi? Aquí estamos, con Senshi, en el Salvador Restaurant de Bellavista, el campeón de Chile Lucha Libre All-Star y el nuevo campeón de LWA Perú. Uh, bueno, how are you guys today? What's up? What's up? We're chilling in Selvato. Thanks so much for letting us host this. Zenshi, Mama Lucha Loco, El Programa Cabal. I'm ready, man. How yeah, you doing? great. That's us. I'm doing great, man. So happy to meet you too, guys. You guys are very yeah. great, very classy. So, <laughs> a pleasure. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, I... I need to start this interview uh, with a very simple question that I think is the, the question that we all need to ask. Uh, wrestling is a very weird art. I've always said it. Uh, not many people can say when they fell in love with wrestling. Do you guys know where you guys fell in love with it and said, man, I want to be a wrestler? Uh, I can tell you... Um The, the moment was, it was Rey Mysterio and Batista, tag team against Eminem. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a, a, a pizza parlor. I was around maybe 14 years old, uh, maybe a little earlier. Um, I used to watch wrestling my brother all the time. But, you know, WCW, all the Monday Night Wars. But, uh -huh. you know, when he, he kind of went to other interests, I kind of went to other interests. But around 13, 14, he's in this pizza parlor. And on the screen, they had WWE SmackDown. And I remember looking up and seeing Rey Mysterio make his entrance, pop out on the floor. Who's that jumping out the sky? And I was like, who is this guy? And just watching him in the ring, I was like, man, look, he's flipping and flying all around. Like, he's clearly like, this guy's cool. And uh, me being a former gymnast, actually still a gymnast at that time, I said, you know what? I think I could probably do that. And that's when I was starting to make the, the thought process of, hmm, maybe if I pursue this wrestling thing, how would it go? Oh, great, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the first time I heard someone like so decisively talking about the, the place where they fell in love with wrestling. Oh, yeah, I remember the, the exact place. <laughs> so you then went to wrestling school. Which school did you want? So I went to the WWA for wrestling school when I was 18. Got a job around 17 um, as, as soon as I could, save up the money. I uh, paid the $990 um, uh, to Mr. Good old total protection, Mr. Hughes, uh -huh. uh, the head trainer at the time. And, um, but it's cool. I, you know, Mr. Hughes gave me my initial foundation, but you know, I, I feel like I've, I've really made a note to learn from so many and really blend as many styles as I can together and learn from, from all over. So I've learned from so many people that I could give credit to for giving me a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. But it started at the WWE. Oh, great. And according to a Cage Match, a very popular site, uh, Mike Quackenbush trained you. Is that correct? Um, I say that sometimes because I spent um, a good deal of uh, time in Chikara. Uh -huh. And uh, if you've ever been around Mike Quackenbush, he is such a wealth of knowledge. You could have a, conver a five minute conversation with him and you can feel like you have a training session. So, after so many locker room meetings, after so many you know, matches uh, there in Jakarta, great place, I feel like, um, yeah, he was a big part of my training as a wrestler. So yeah, he's very good. respected, so I yeah. think it's always good to have that background. For sure, for sure. He's not called uh, Mike Quackenbush uh, for no reason, he's got his, uh, his quacks and quirks. But uh, overall, you know, it was, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a wonderful experience working with Chikara and with him and, and uh, everybody, everybody there. Well, you had uh, many experiences uh, in the indie circuit in the United States of America, my country. I'm yeah, proud yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you also had an experience defending the CLL All-Star title with the likes of Johnny Gargano, yeah, yeah, uh, Chuck Taylor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kimberly, which surprised me. Yeah, that was a fun match. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Happy late if uh, you've been watching WWE <laughs> <It was laughs> last year. Yeah, and one of my personal favorites, uh, David Starr. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Starr is an uh, interesting character, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like very inspired with David Starr. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I love his style. <laughs> the, man, the man of 50 uh, ring names. Yeah, the, the wrestling favorite wrestler. Uh, The cream of your coffee and all that. All that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you learned something from all these very experienced guys? Um, for the most part, um, for sure. There's always someone you can learn from. Whether it's the guy at the top of the, the card or the woman at the top of the card you know, in the main event. Or maybe it's the person, the opener, the 
person in the popcorn. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You can always learn from somebody, um, and I, I've learned from a lot throughout the years. Yeah, that's great. And also, you had a experience on Impact Wrestling. Um, uh, a couple times. Um, yeah, my first. Uh, my first one is probably the most bizarre story. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I'm chilling on Impact. I'm, um, you know, setting up the ring and everything. And uh, I had had a match with Matt Hardy previously. Uh huh. Uh, maybe six months prior, maybe not even, maybe four months prior, at Dreamwave Wrestling, another good place that doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, it just kind of fell into place, and Jeff Hardy really wanted an opponent. Um, he was still not medically cleared to, to wrestle to his full capacity, but he was trying to tell the office, like, hey, I want to wrestle, I'm here, I haven't been on TV in, in six months from my motorcycle accident. And um, yeah, they looked around and was like, you know what? I think Shinron at the time would be a, a good opponent. So uh, they, they put me in the position and I had to go out there and do my best. Uh, I, <laughs> I guess notice. it was such a privilege to yeah. be there. Man. Yeah. Uh, so according to that, I think in pop wrestling it's growing a lot. Maybe not that big enough to be a competition for the WWE, you know. WWE is a monster. How can you compete with WWE? But what do you think about the actual state of indie wrestling in the United States like now? Um, so I think um, you know everybody's got their own opinion, and there's many different perspectives you could look look at. Um, but number one, it's overwhelmingly positive in the in, in the fact that there's never been more opportunity for wrestlers. There's never been more ways for wrestlers to you know uh, you know to go. Before we were told, hey, there's only one path: you either go to WWE, WWE, or you're a loser. Yeah. Like that was the only options. And the people that had access to WWE was like, eh, small. And then everybody else was like, oh, you're wasting your time. Why are you a wrestler? All this kind of stuff. Now, you know, they're starting to pay attention to the independents more. You know, there's, there's, there's way more types of wrestling now. With the internet, it's exploded. Now you can actually send your resume into WWE. There's a way for you to do it now. Before, you had to put your stuff on a DVD or a VHS and, and go to WB headquarters and hope you can pass it to someone that'll pass it to someone that'll pass, throw it through the window, pray to God, you know? So I feel like uh, overall it's much better. Yeah, of course. And also you can see that in the WrestleMania weekend shows. Yeah, for sure. Which are as good as NXT or maybe the WrestleMania itself. Mm -hmm. So for sure. have you... Uh, try to get maybe a little bit of more experience overseas, like not only United States and South America. Have you been in Europe, for example? Would you like to be in Europe, Japan? Um, not quite yet. Um, right now, my focus has been on South America. Um, I'm trying to take over a country one at a time. We got Chile on lock. We got Peru. Um, yeah, it's our of course. Acquisition. <laughs> But uh, how about some Ecuador, some Argentina, and some Brazil? Yes. How about some. If you're listening, Brazil Wrestling Federation. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but uh, no, I'm not. But I'm looking at South America. Eventually, Europe, Japan. I want to go to Australia. I'm someone that takes more pride in going to places not previously traversed yeah. by most wrestlers. That's why Chile was so uh, interesting to me, as you know, in the, in the states. People were like, "There's wrestling in Chile." Like Chile. Oh, okay, okay. And when Fox, won, you know, was the first champion, it was taking the belt to all these places, that's when a lot of eyes were like opened up for the fans in the U.S. Um, and I feel like I built upon that platform and then I'm taking that same uh, that idea and I'm trying to bring it everywhere else. Yeah, of course. You know, in Chile, it was very complicated to be a wrestler because like 10 years ago, if, if you said to someone, WWE is doing a tryout in Chile, they will laugh their ass off in your face. <laughs> But now it's possible. It happened. Yes, days ago. Yeah. It, here, WWE it's, in Chile yesterday. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I, crazy. I can't even believe it. Pretty crazy. I see how WWE is. I, I think I feel like I see their their, their game plan here. They're trying to exp expand NXT to different territories. You know, with the UK. You know, I feel like there's going to be an NXT Latin America so slash South America. I feel like there's going to be an NXT um, uh, Asia or. You know, name it whatever you want. NXT Down Under, you know, for New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like um, that's just more opportunity for everybody. Yeah, of course. So have you, while well, we're talking about Chile and professional wrestling in Chile, 
Have you seen any other product in Chile along uh, alongside CLL? Um, a bit, a bit. You know, CLL is my baby yeah, right course. here. So you know, I gotta, I gotta focus 99% on Chile Leach Libre because I think we're just the best. Um, yeah, of course. But <laughs> not putting any other Chilean uh, promotions down. But no, I, I do take some time and, 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 and watch some some of the other guys coming up and um, mostly matches that people send me. Because um, I'm not here all the time, so obviously I'm not in the news all the time. But I do have friends that send me clips, send me matches, and I uh -huh. do follow people on Instagram and YouTube and, and, and end up uh, watching things here and there. Okay, uh, and of course the, the place where you have more influence is CLL. Uh, have you trained with the CLL crew? How, what do you think in general about CLL? For sure, I think CLL has shown so much growth oh, since uh, I, was, I was here the first time back in 2014. And even since I was here the second time earlier this year, um, I remember working with them in a seminar, you know, I don't know, four and a half years ago. And uh, it was still very much raw talent, you know, it was just like rough around the edges, but pe a group of people that wanted to just try and they wanted to make something for themselves. I could feel the passion. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now, um, you know, to, to see how far CLL has come and the quality of wrestling, it's, it's really cool. Oh, great. So, we're seeing that you are here with Mama Lucha Loco. Oh, yeah. Hola. Hola. Uh, do you travel a lot with Senshi? I try to as much as possible. Um, due to some disabilities, he tends to go out first and check the area for me. And my future is to be as invested in his career as my other children's as well. So, I'm just... Super blessed. You're having a blast, I guess. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. a blast. By the way, hola, amo a Chile. <laughs> yeah. Woo! She loves Chile. Yes. Yeah, Chile is a wonderful country. So, have you guys, talking about Chile, have you a uh, walk around Plaza de Armas, maybe? Oh, so we love Plaza. We went there yesterday, Plaza de Armas. Yesterday. Yeah, yes. yeah. One of my favorite so places. Beautiful. And, and like other cities, maybe Valparaiso, Concepcion. I was here about in Valparaiso uh, before. Ah, oh, I love the coast and the, the houses and the graffiti and the, the parkour, all that stuff. I love Valparaiso. I'm gonna take you eventually. I don't know if yes, we have time I must this go. trip, oh, but uh, no. pretty soon. We'll, we'll, we'll I hear see. It's beautiful. We'll see. You know, we got a couple okay. days for the show. I gotta stay focused on. Uh, you know, my opponents, but Absolutely. maybe if we have time. Yeah, of Absolutely. course. Uh, about that, let's talk about your opponents. Do you know something about uh, Mr. Caton, for example? Ooh, we have some history. We have some history. Uh, we were supposed to wrestle last time. Uh -huh. Finally, we're supposed to get in the ring with Mr. Caton. I hear he's this big bad wolf around CLL, uh, yeah. you know, yelling his name all the time like he's Mr. Kennedy or something. But, you know, he went ahead and got hurt. The yeah. day before the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Things happen. So it turned into a triple threat. Myself, MX, awesome. Delacroix, yeah. mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> it's supposed to be a, th a triple threat, you know? If you're out of the match, you're out of the match. But he comes out and he tries to interfere at the end, you know? I'm not saying MX would have hit that frog splash and got the victory, but hey, MX I'm sure didn't appreciate that. Of course. I don't appreciate that. Delacroix doesn't appreciate that. Sent his goons out. We had to watch him out with a double That's right. That's right. You know, it was frantic, but somehow I was able to, to keep this. But this time, this Sunday, Mr. Caden finally gets his shot, if he can stay uh -huh. healthy. So, can we say, like a metaphor, uh, Mr. Caden Chupalo? <laughs> yeah. I, think, uh, I think we can. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but he's not the only one. He's not the only one. Everyone else can Chupalo of your points? Yeah? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, then we got Factor. You know, I always wanted to be a champion that wasn't afraid of anybody. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I started to hear some rumors that I might be ducking Factor because I didn't want to be driven down to the canvas. But, uh -huh. you know, I want to show that, hey, I'm down to face anybody in CLL. And that includes Factor. I think he does, he's well-deserving at this point of a title shot. Oh, great. So, as a final message to your opponents, looking at the camera, like with all your rage, what would you say to them right now? First of all, you gotta keep a zen, baby. Sometimes oh, you don't need to be dang. mad all the time. If <laughs> I'm confident in myself for, the, for this Sunday. I don't need to, I don't need to come out and, and be too angry. But hold on, there's somebody you forgot. Remember, 
There's one more opponent. Really? You know what? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do the announcement right here. Let's do it now. Right here, and I'll play around the ball. Okay, okay, okay. I've been keeping this one. See, come on. Okay, okay. Man. Man. CLO gave me the Let choice to choose my opponents, you know? Yes. Let it out. It's almost time for the show. <laughs> the match is almost complete. I think we need someone that's almost human. I think we need Cassie Humano. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> really? Back to not being afraid of anybody. I know he's... <sighs> Madman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I can uh, figure out some way to... Uh, <laughs> more than I can choose. Are you sure? <laughs> well, I'll be at ringside, too. Uh, just, just to... Maybe this maybe one. To maybe to make this one, you don't go to ringside. Yeah, okay. You know that. this one. Oh, no, forget about it. We're not afraid of anybody. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. You know, Tista Ariel is about to take you out. Peyton, Factor, Cassie Humano, the whole roster. Bring it. I would yeah, drop I, I, I get the idea. I think it's a good idea that Mama Lucha Loco is there because <laughs> Mr. Keaton uh, has, like, uh, this guy, the oh. Chupa Pico. Yeah, they, they yeah, call? Yeah, yeah. Bring him uh, on, bring him on. Yeah, you can kick Chupa bring Pico's ass. Absolutely. Yeah. Part of my job is not just as Mama, but I'm his assistant. So, uh -huh. you need to be a peak You mean bodyguard. Bodyguard. Mess with my baby, I mean my employer. <laughs> and then you deal with my mama, Lucha, loco. I get pretty loco if you mess with me. Otherwise, I'm cool. Love you, mom. Thank you. All right. Well, love us in the air. <laughs> so, I, this is, has been an absolute pleasure for me to know both of you guys. Uh, it's time for the open wire. Open wire, let's so go. So you have the camera. You can say whatever you please. Like curses, <laughs> words of advice, whatever. It's your minute of fame. Go ahead. Open wire. Open, open wire. wire. Open wire. Yeah. You know what else is open wire? How zen she's going to bring that hot fire. <laughs> I'm jumping all through the ring and through the skies. Yes. You're going to look up and wonder why, how did he go so far, fly so much? <gasps> when I hit you with that cobra clutch, oh. you're going to think you had a little bit too much. Oh. This championship right here uh -oh. means the world. It's, it's almost it. been 2,000 okay. days. Okay. Mr. Caton, Factor, Jeremy, uh, Cassie Humano. <laughs> no way. Zinchi is in Chile here to stay. Uh, well, cheers yes. for that. So, that was not about a freestyle. I think I should uh, be featured on Logic's next album. I, yeah. Yes. Logic, you hear me? You want to hey, do. Let's, let's look it up. I will support you. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. Thank you so much for this interview, uh, Senshi, the CLL All-Star Champion, LWA International Champion. Thanks so much. Thank you so I much. appreciate it. Mama Lucha, thank, thank you, you so much. I'm here also for this wonderful area and country to share the love. I'm getting emotional now. I love the young wrestlers coming up. I've seen what my son has gone through to get to where he is. Hang in there, guys, and young ladies. Don't give up. And young ladies, step forward. Step forward, young ladies. It's not just for the men. Also, I'm here on behalf of the animals, especially dogs. I am a, in America, a service dog trainer, working dogs. And um, I have a passion for the, uh, the dogs that are um, running around the streets with nowhere to go. So my 12 Paws Foundation back in America is working with a lady I met from Holland, trying to figure out a way to help the animals here too. Yeah, that's awesome. Be before we before we wrap up, I know we have a little bit of t a time limit, but you brought up another thing. I think belief is a big thing. Um, I think it all starts with your thoughts. Um, I think it uh, I think it begins there. So if you want to make anything happen, um, you really got to believe in yourself and believe you can do it. Um, you know, one part of my mission, real, you know, of conquering the con countries one at a time. It's not so much conquering them, but it's, it's, it's sharing the love of Lucha Libre. It's sharing that love of wrestling. And, um, you know, I feel like I've been so blessed to do so many great things with Chile Lucha Libre, and now so many doors are opening up in Peru, and I just want to keep spreading that. Just want to keep uh, working with all the young wrestlers and really change the foundation of wrestling um, in these places that don't have as much access. Um, that's been a big passion of mine, even in lieu of my own fame or success. Like, people are like, why aren't you on this company? Why aren't you on this company? Well, how come you haven't won WWE yet? Because I have a long-term vision. This is 10-year visions, not today's success. So I have no 
problem deferring my own stuff and going through the sacrifices. I mean, these are proof right here. Like, there, you have no idea. There was so much blood, sweat, and tears put into just the fact that we're sitting here right now. Um, uh, and I just feel such a close connection with these two companies uh, in particular. And I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's my mission in wrestling almost uh, to continue that um, and see what ends up. So we can say that first Chile, then Peru, later the world? Later the world. Later the universe. That's awesome. Let's do it. Uh, chicos, no, no surrendan. Mensaje de Senshi. So thank you so much again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ciao. 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 This is Zenji, and we're here at the restaurant Cebado with El Programa Keval, and we're over mm -hmm. here enjoying with the chef, Mama Lucha Loco, Mama and this Lucha wonderful Loco. Sheramoya juice. <laughs> I love your yeah, mango. Salut. Refreshing, salut. delicioso. I need salut. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Para el programa que vale, de parte de aquí el restaurante Salvado, y con mucho amor y cariño para ustedes. Yeah, we're here, Sabato. Sabato. <laughs> It's a beautiful place. Uh, I just love the decor. The food is very, very good, very tasty. Oh, this is mango. Oh, oh my. Yeah, man. <laughs> It's so good.